Christian, we're called to reach people for Jesus. We're all called to go into the world. Jesus said, go. Did he not? Say it with me, go. go. Right. And one of the things we talked about last week is God called us, the, this called household. There's a Greek word called oikos. And so the word oikos means your immediate family, but it also means your circle of influence. So a lot of people, when you're thinking about, oh, I'm going to reach people for Jesus, or I'm going to try to invite somebody to church, and I'm going to reach out, they're thinking, I'm going to have to go and cold call people, or I'm going to have to just walk up to some random stranger and invite them. That's not the way the gospel structures it at all. It actually structures it to us to meet, reach our immediate family first. You and your whole household will be saved. You and your whole oikos will be saved. That's actually a promise that God gives to us. And the reason is, is because you have a lot of social capital with your family, don't you? Yeah, crazy Uncle Bill, right? You, we, all got, we all got some crazy family members. We all got, and your family's all got brokenness in their life. Every family does. And so we have an in with them because we have a relationship with them. We have social capital with them. And so God, when he calls us to reach people, the first place, he gives us the low-hanging fruit. The second area that he gives us is the people that we have influence with. Who do you have influence with? And which is sort of your friends or your just peer groups, things like that. Those are the first two major groups that God calls us to reach or to go for. So it's not like you're having to go out there and do random things. You know, we're doing some go teams, and we're going to go out and do power evangelism. And so we're going to be doing that in the next couple of weeks. That's going to be straight up, let's go kind of stuff. But not everybody is wired that way. Some people are different, and that's okay. But all of us, not everybody is Billy Graham, but everybody can invite someone. Not everybody can give the Sermon on the Mount or can preach like Paul, but every one of us is responsible to invite. We can all invite. And so the idea is that we're hope dealers. That's, a, that's the bottom line. We're looking for specific things. The gospel is always to the poor. It's always to the broken, not the poor financially, but the people that are dealing with broken issues in their life. It says, then the master said to the servant, go unto the highways and the byways and compel them. That is, invite them to come in that my house may be full. So the call upon the Christian is twofold. To go and make disciples, Matthew 28. And in here you see it in Luke 14, to compel them into the house. So there's two different methods of evangelism. We call, and if you're going to go out there and you're going to lead people to Jesus, you're going to call them unto Christ, or you're going to start this relationship with them or bring them into some form of discipleship, that's great. Some people can do that, but not everybody can. The church spent about, I don't know, at least 10 years on a whole process. Anybody ever heard of evangelism explosion at all? Right? Yeah. See, we've heard of evangelism explosion. This is back in the, I'm dating myself. This is back a while ago. And so all these churches were teaching these evangelism explosion classes to teach people how to share their faith one-on-one. -on -one. The problem wasn't that the program wasn't effective. The problem is, is that people don't operate like that. It's just not the way most people can operate. If that evangelism explosion actually worked in scale, I'm not saying you shouldn't know how to do it. That's not what I'm saying. But the problem is, is that most people will not say, if you died tonight, do you know where, you're do you, know where you would go? Most Christians don't, don't do that. We just, we just don't. There are, there are those that do, and there are those that just mostly don't. The relationship power of evangelism is actually the most effective. So in reaching families, that's very, very effective. Paul, when he, uh, I forget the church, but he encountered uh, uh, the woman, I think it's Lydia, uh, who was uh, by the river praying. So Paul was planting churches, and he went into a city, and the idea that where, where Paul would go, when Paul was starting to do ministry or he was starting to reach people for Jesus, he would go first to the God-seekers or the God-fearers. He would go to those who had a spiritual, they were open spiritually, right? And so he would typically look for the synagogue and try to reach among the Jews and try to do that. If he couldn't find them, he would go to the river because there would always be women praying, the, the sort of the rule or the cultural standard within Judaism at that time was that if there were 12 men in a city, they were required to form a synagogue. They were supposed to form an assembly. If there were 12 believing Jews, they may not have a pastor or anything. They may not have a leader or whatever it was, but they were to, called to form a community. If there were not 12 believing males, then the women were required to do a prayer meeting, and usually they were in tandem. And so when Paul couldn't find a, uh, couldn't find a teaching community, he went to the river and he found Lydia and the women were by the water praying. They would always pray by moving water. It's interesting, right? Because prayer moves the river. And so they were praying by, by moving wa by, by water and he meets this woman and this woman is insanely influential. And she started, there was prayer houses that were started. This woman started prayer houses. Why? Because that was what she, but she comes to Christ. She leads her whole network, her whole circle comes to Jesus and they all start these prayer communities. Interesting, right? <clears throat> but we're called, to, we're called to go into all the world. We're called to reach the oikos. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm going to teach the go class, I think, if my wife gives me permission. 
<coughs> she's got to give me permission because it's her idea. So I want to honor my wife with that brilliant idea of creating Go Teams. Thank you, Sherry. <coughs> so if she lets me teach, I'm going to teach the first class. And, and, um, but anyway, one of the things is finding the person of peace, trying to find the most influential person. Um, so it's not just finding, you, there's different ways of doing it. When Paul's interested with the, with the example I shared, he finds the person of influence, and that person of influence comes to Christ and influences everybody else in the same direction. We're supposed to go out into the highways and the hedges, highways and the byways, and we're supposed to compel them. We're supposed to invite people that the house may be filled. So you can invite people individually. You can tell them about Jesus and that whole nine, which is great. But all of us, all of us are responsible to invite. We all are. We're going to stand before the Lord Every single one of you will stand before the Lord and we will give an accounting of our life. We'll give an accounting of what we did with what he gave us. That accounting is God not looking at our life to determine what is wrong. That accounting is God looking into our life to determine our reward. You understand that? The believer doesn't go before the white judgment seat. They go before the Bema seat. The Bema seat in the, in the scripture is called the seat of the reward. We go before a rainbow throne. There's two different thrones. You don't want to go to the white throne. That's not the one you want to go to, Right? <laughs> so when people are dying, they're like, I died and I was moving towards white light. Stay away from the white light. That's not the, that's not the light you want to go to. You want to go to the disco light. You want to go to the one that looks like the mirror ball, you know, oons, oons, oons. That's the, that's, the, that's the rainbow light's the one you want to go to. That's the, that's the seat of reward. And so we come before the Lord, the seat of reward, and God is going to reward us on everything that we, we did for him and what we did to you, what we used with what he had. And we're, we have minimum standards. We have minimum requirements. God does not to expect us to do nothing. The minimum standard of all the Christians, every Christian, is to participate at minimum at what the house is doing, entrusting it with the stewards. That's what he says. You should have at least entrusted it with the stewards. The stewards is his house, that I might have interest. So when you, we work together as a team, God is gaining interest. Right, his whole. You're, so there's you're, you're participating in something that's a corporate or a collective. We're all responsible individually, but we're also responsible corporately. And so when we corporately when we corporately do the things that, that that we're supposed to, we're rewarded for that as well. 